Um, my background I'll do very quickly, but I don't want to bore you. Uh, I'm an engineer, I've been an entrepreneur, and um, I'm currently an academic. I've been an academic for a long time, but I've had four startups, two worked out, and I would have sold those with my co-founders. Two didn't work out, so I've kind of seen both sides of, of the startup fence. And um, actually at the moment I'm teaching entrepreneurship, so I've been doing this for the past two years, mainly based on this bit of entrepreneurship content, which um, Suraj has obviously told you about, and you had uh, Trish Cotter um, last week, so this is the, the book, This Bit of Entrepreneurship. And we're going to look today at the second phase of, of This Bit of Entrepreneurship, which is what can you do for your customer. Um, so I'll go straight to it. So, have you all seen this picture before? Yeah, 24 steps, okay. So you've seen this last week with, with Trish, and um, this first phase, uh, just explain to Peter as well, is who's your customer? So you're trying to get a very in-depth understanding of your customer. The demographics and the psychographics are very important here, and that you focus in on one type of customer. You want to be able to um, have that coherent view of, of, of who your customer is, um, and understand what makes them tick, okay? So today we're gonna to look at the second phase of what do you do for your customer, okay? So what's the, what's the as uh, Suraj mentioned, what's the core proposition, what's the, the quantified value proposition? How does that align to the, your core aspects of your team and what you have to offer? Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll get going. But one quick thing is this quote, which, which you may have seen before from Steve Jobs, which is, I'm actually as proud of the things we haven't done as the things I have done. And again, this links back to what you would have heard last week. If you try to do too many things and try to create too many products and try to serve too many customers, you will lose focus, you will also burn through resources, and it's a good way to fail. Okay, so I've done this in the past. I was telling somebody this morning, um, I had an app company um, about four or five years ago. We had great co-founders. We created this fantastic newsreader product, but as we were developing it, we decided to do two other things on top of that. We created a newsreader, we created a magazine app, we created a, an events display app, all within the one product. We burned through all of our cash, developing this product for three different customers, and then we done money for marketing or sales or any of that kind of stuff afterwards. And we had great coverage, we got a, an article on TechCrunch, which is a very popular tech blog, but eventually ran out of money and disappeared. So, focus is key, but also knowing who that customer is, having that coherent profile, knowing that there's a single sales process to get to that customer in the very beginning, and you have a homogenous product, homogenous customer, and a homogenous sales process, all very important, okay? So that's kind of a, the recap of, of last week. Um, so we're gonna see how much of this we can get through today um, in 45 minutes, but as you realize, I speak very fast, so maybe we can get all the way to the end if we really want to. Um, but no, we're gonna go through some of these steps and see how, how far we push along. So I'm gonna start off with the full life cycle use case. And this is good even just to think about your team to get everybody on the same page. How does somebody become aware that they need your service or your product all the way through to the other end where they start telling other people about your service or product? And you want to kind of understand all of the parts along that life cycle. So I'm going to start off with a couple of use cases and some of them are good and some of them are bad. Um, I'll start off with the bad ones or the ones that are maybe perhaps not um, defined enough.